Good evening. Welcome to St. Paul's. During the season of Advent, for many of us, it is also a time of purchasing gifts. Maybe you're one of those people that already have done your shopping and it's already been done for some time, or maybe you're the person that goes out shopping New Year's Christmas Eve to buy the gifts for that evening. But no matter what time it is, it's probably one of those things that are common with all of us. This evening, we focus on the gift that God is giving to this world, the gift that is coming in our Savior, Jesus Christ. The order of service that will follow this evening is the order of service that's on the screens, and we begin. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Stay with us, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day of grace, now drawing to a close. Stay with us and warm our hearts with your forgiving love in Christ. May your word keep our faith burning brightly, that we may walk in the light of your presence through the darkness of this world. Come and bless us as we worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Imagine for a moment the perfect pie. The perfect pie with crust that is just the right amount of flakiness to it and yet is baked to perfection. A pie that has the warm, fruit-filled filling inside and it fills the entire kitchen. Imagine a symphony playing a symphony who is in tune and is in time and being played with the perfect expression. Think about the gift that is often given to people. Gifts that are carefully planned, thought through, and presented in the right way. Tonight, as I said, we take a look at this gift that God gave this world in his son, Jesus you know, to bake a perfect pie, it requires some experience. My guess is if you've ever experienced somebody who is a very, very experienced and good baker, it didn't just happen overnight. You might enjoy that pie that you're eating now, but I'm going to bet there probably were some pies further back that weren't exactly the best of pies. Or if you attend a symphony and you listen to all the different instruments playing, it is amazing that probably to make that sound perfect, it took months and months of practicing and memorizing. But the gift that Jesus gives us this evening in his son is a gift that came to us even before time began. The Apostle Paul, when he writes to the Ephesians, he says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. This plan of salvation that God had for his people began before this world even began. And it's hard for us even to wrap our minds around that whole thought, isn't it? That before the beginning of time, God planned carefully the gift that he was going to bring into this world. He was planned that gift of his son. Perfectly planned at the exact right time. You know, in a world today that is so changing, we have a God who assures us that the gift he gives us doesn't change. 
It's a gift that he has given to this world before time began. A gift to be treasured. A gift for all. We hear about that gift as Paul writes in the second letter to Timothy these words. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Here ends our reading. We join in praying the prayer together. Heavenly Father, we praise you that it was your good pleasure to make known to us the mystery of your will. Thank you for including us in Christ when we heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation. We look forward to that day when the times will have reached their fulfillment, the day when all things in heaven and on earth are brought together under one head, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray, amen. Every gift that is given is a gift that needs to be bought. It needs to be purchased. And some of those gifts that we may get may be more costly than others. Perhaps the deeper love that we have for someone, the more costly that gift may be. Then there are those gifts that we give simply because we like somebody, or simply because we work with them, and so when we look for those gifts, we try to find the best deal that we possibly can get on that gift. Or we might even buy those gifts using a coupon or two. And if we do that, there certainly is nothing wrong with that, because sometimes that is done so that you can give someone more of a gift or more people gifts. But God's gift of salvation had to be purchased as well. That gift of our Savior was not purchased by any gold or silver. It was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And it was a price that none of us here this evening could possibly pay. It was a price that this entire world, even collectively, would not have been able to purchase. And so God sent a perfect gift, purchased by his Son, Jesus Christ. You know, as much as we would love to give gifts to everybody in our lives and those around us, there's a limit as how many gifts we can possibly give, right? There's a limit of how much money we have, or maybe there's a limit of how much time that we may have to purchase those gifts. But the amount and the number of those gifts 
may vary from person to person, and yet the truth is the same. There is a limit that we have. But this gift that was purchased by Jesus' body and his blood, the salvation of this world, has no limits. It's a gift that was purchased for all, a gift that is clearly given to all. And it's also one of those gifts that you and I, not only do receive that forgiveness freely from our God, but it is also a gift that we are able to give freely to others. A gift purchased by the blood of Jesus. The Apostle Peter, in our next reading, speaks about that gift, that purchase price that was paid for our salvation. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Your ends are reading. We join in praying. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for the payment you made on the cross where you paid for my sins and for the sins of the whole world as we wait for your coming. Help us to share the message that you came and died for all. Help us, your redeemed people, to share with others the good news that you have redeemed them too. Amen. Christmas gift-giving would be different. If we just simply went to the store to purchase a gift, and then when we got home, we just simply handed them the gift and said, here it is. Now maybe there's a practical side that's part of me, I suppose. Maybe it's a guy thing, I really don't know. But it's one of those things that sometimes, you know, after you purchase that gift, now you've got to spend all of this time wrapping it in paper. And then it's got to be the certain kind of paper, in the certain print of paper, or in a certain gift bag. 
the gift needs to be presented in just the same way. And then I also will admit that there are times that I think you would lose the fun of gift giving if you just simply said to somebody, here it is. Because isn't it kind of fun to watch people trying to guess what that gift might be? Isn't it kind of fun to sit back and know that perhaps this is the gift that they really want and you want to see the joy on their face as they pull that paper back or take it out of that bag and then watch their eyes just open wide. Probably there would be something lost with gift giving if you just said, here it is. I think some of the joy of giving gifts would be lost in that. And even though said, there are times where I may not like necessarily wrapping those gifts, it's really a good thing to watch that gift be presented to someone else. But I think there's also one other thing that would be lost if we just simply handed the gift to them and then present it to them. And I think if somebody just at first sees that gift, perhaps the possibility is that they might look at their gift and almost have the thought, eh, what is this? And maybe perhaps they may even look at that gift and think, maybe I can take it back and get something better for it, right? And maybe the wrapping and the presenting of the gift kind of changes our attitude towards that gift. But God's word is clear that the gift that he gave this world in Jesus, it was no surprise. It was talked about for centuries throughout the pages of the Bible. When Jesus came into this world, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus never hid that for three years of his ministry. He plainly said why he had come to this world. Good Friday was not a surprise, and neither was Easter Sunday. But you know that gift? Even though that gift is clearly given to us in his word, and even though we know what that gift is, there's not a gift any greater than that gift that we possibly could ever want in this world. Because you see, this gift that God is giving to us this Christmas is a gift that cannot be beat. It is greater than anything in this world. And it was a gift that was prepared for God himself. Because you see, that gift is exactly the gift that every one of us needs and a gift that every one of us has in Jesus. We hear the Apostle Paul speak about that gift that was prepared for this world, a gift that was wrapped in flesh and blood, but a gift that even though it may not look like a gift, was the salvation of the world through the death of Christ. We hear that gift being prepared for this world. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant, be made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. We pray that God would use that gift of his word to prepare our hearts for our Savior at Christmas. We join together in praying. Holy Spirit, Prepare our hearts 
Open our eyes to the greatness of our sin. Open our souls to the greatness of our Father's love for us in Christ. And open our lives to the joy of living as God's redeemed people. This Christmas, turn aside all distractions so that we see with clear and faith-filled vision the gift of salvation that you have so lovingly prepared for us in Jesus. Amen. Even though that gift that we may give someone was planned, it was prepared, it was wrapped, and ready to be given, that gift really doesn't mean a whole lot until that time comes that you actually give that person that gift. You know, and there's a kind of fun thing with that, isn't it? In the presenting of that gift for people. Perhaps maybe some of you were like our family when we were growing up, that you kind of got your gifts starting in a certain order. And perhaps as you were given that gift, you were first given that gift that was probably the smallest, the least expensive gift. The gift that was that smaller thing that, yes, it was nice that it was given, but it wasn't the gift. And as you worked through the presents that were underneath that tree, you finally got to that gift that was last. That gift that was precious to you. And you gave that gift to the person or people you love the most. What joy there is in giving that gift. Giving that gift at the perfect time, in the perfect way, in the perfect place can bring, oh, so much joy <clears throat> to our hearts. Isn't that the joy that we sometimes have when we give gifts? Not only do we have to give those gifts sometimes in the order of value to them, but you have to give them at the right time. Oh, you and I may understand that if we travel somewhere else for Christmas, we may have to give those gifts before Christmas or perhaps after Christmas because of the way it needs to be. But isn't there something special that when you're all, you're all home for Christmas, whether that's on Christmas Eve or first thing Christmas morning, to watch all those gifts, 
to be given at the right time, in the right place, in the right way. Paul speaks about that gift of a Savior. The gift that was given to this world at the perfect time. For centuries upon centuries, God had prepared this world for that gift. But then the day came. The day came when it was his turn to give this world a gift. A gift that would last eternity, as Paul would say, when the time had fully come, God sent his son. And the people through whom that gift was given were prepared for that gift. Mary and Joseph were both prepared by an angel. And the angel spoke to them and told them what this gift was going to be and what this gift was going to do. That this was the gift that all of the world had been waiting for. This was the gift who would bring God with his people. The angel speak, spoke, speaks to Joseph in our next reading in the book of Matthew chapter 1, beginning with verse 20, when he speaks about this gift that is given to this world. But after he had considered this, an angel Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And we pray that God will once again be with us to unwrap that gift of Jesus and to see the gift that is given not just to this world, but to each and every single one of us every day of our life. We pray together. Try you, God, we praise you for your work in Christ's incarnation for our salvation. By your word and sacrament, renew our faith this Advent and Christmas so that we find our Savior born in Bethlehem and trusting in him for full and free forgiveness, receive this precious gift to our eternal benefit. In your name we pray. Finally, this evening, as we take a look at the Advent gift of our salvation and our Savior, we see a gift that is prepared and planned and wrapped and presented to us and given to us all at the same time, the right time. But you know that perfect gift doesn't really mean as much if that gift is just put up there on a shelf and sits 
by itself and not enjoyed by you. Just to see the example of that, if you've ever had small children or given a gift to grandchildren, what do they do when they open that gift of a truck, of a toy? They want to stop right there and enjoy that gift, right? And there's a lot of people around, perhaps you're even trying to encourage them along, you know, there's other people here, you may not say that to them, but certainly maybe in your mind. They just simply want to enjoy the gift they've received. See, that's what God wants us to do with Jesus as well. He wants us to receive that gift that is given to us. And it's not a gift that just sits up there sort of on its side or away from everybody else. He says, I want that gift enjoyed by you. Every moment of your life. And so it is our prayer that as we continue to look forward to that gift that God gives this world in a couple weeks at Christmas, enjoy that gift. Enjoy that gift of forgiveness that's been given to you by God. Enjoy that gift that gives you hope every day of our life. Enjoy that gift that enables you to simply sometimes hang on to life as it goes racing along. Enjoy the gift. Of Jesus. That's the comfort that our God brings us. And that's the comfort the Apostle Paul also wanted to bring to God's people. He wanted to share that gift of comfort that he had received from his God. And he wanted them to share that gift and enjoy that gift as well. Read from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians chapter 1 beginning with verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance, the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. Here ends our reading. We pray together. Eternal Father, direct our eyes not only to the manger, but also to the skies, where we will see your son coming again, not as a lowly child, as the Lord of Lords. Lift up our hearts in joyful anticipation of that day, and fill our lives with the message of your peace and the music of your grace.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.